So Raynaud's is a situation, one thing we do with patients who have poor circulation is we use those hand warmers uh, like skiers use, and those can often allow you to get a reading. The other thing you could do is you can invest in a higher quality oximeter. Um, the other thing you can do is, um, you know, they have forehead oximeters uh, for people who do have poor circulation in their hands and extremities. And we use those with a lot of ILD patients or pulmonary hypertension patients. Um, or I would go to, uh, you know, like a, a rehab center or a, a diagnostic center where they can have you do the exercise with a high quality, uh, a high quality device. But if you have a pretty um, high quality device, like you should be able to get a reading even while you're biking. Like there's one that I use that, uh, I mean, it's on the expensive side, but it's a known in and it's the one that has Bluetooth with it. Um, or you can get one like that has the wrist on it. Like the most of the overnight, yeah, Rob Lower is showing us one right now. So you can use that. Um, uh, unless that's the one you mean, like a ring, is that what you mean? Uh, yes. That one works. Okay, that one works. But that one that Rob is holding right there, you should be able to get a good reading off of that. But if you are active, and it sounds like you are, if you're biking regularly, um, or if you're running, or if you're doing high levels of activity, it's definitely worth your while to invest in an oximeter that is high quality. Because again, you don't want... Um, Peter Thompson, is that just the ring that you're holding or the ring and the, uh... unmute Peter. Yep, uh, mine is the Wellu. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So I haven't and, used it, I've heard of it. How is it? Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I have been surprised at times because it seems to indicate desaturation a little bit quicker than my pulse oximeter would. I mean, I would set up a test with that where versus your oximeter and see how close they are. May I interrupt? Yes. I interrupt? Yep. My, name is, my name is Mark. Uh, this Massimo unit is uh, very good. Oh it yeah, works. that one's great. I have that one too. It works very well when you're moving around. It's consistent uh, and uh, it's a terrific product. And by the way, if you call them and up and ask for a discount, they'll give you 20% off on it. This is a $300 list item but it does work superior to anything else. What's the name of it? Massimo. So I'll show you, I'll show you. We use Massimo in our clinic, um, but we, we use the, the clinical ones. We use the, the, the medical ones. Um, and those are the top, the absolute. So Roy Smith is dem demonstrating the known in. We use that and we use that one with our study. And we thought that one was great. Um, very accurate. Um, the one that we use in our clinic is this one here, the, the RAD5. And this is the most accurate one on earth. So this one is specifically made for people who have trouble, um, have trouble getting a reading um, or who um, you know, have poor circulation. The ones that we saw here today, the Nonin that Roy Smith has, the Massimo that Mark has. Um, and, you know, I mean, Again, if you have unlimited funds and you have difficulty um, you know, getting a reading, it is worth getting a clinical model and you could often get these things you know, refurbished or something like that because it is really important to know. Um, you know it's like, ask yourself how likely you would um, be to travel uh, if your uh, gas tank were, if, you're, if your gas gauge didn't work, right? And you didn't know how much gas you had. You'd, you'd have you'd have no choice. It's the same thing, except the, the stakes are higher with oxygen. With my Raynaud's, I use my thumbs to get readings from the known and go-to oximeter, whether exercising at rest. So yeah, another kind of good rule of thumb, no pun intended, is that um, if you have particularly fat fingers or thick fingers, use your thinnest finger. And if you have particularly thin fingers, use your thickest finger.